hello. This is Oya Dimalo Cinema Club. I'm Michaela, and we have JP, Steve, and Dino today. And today we are talking about Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein for 1948. Woo. My pick. So let's just jump right into it. What was everyone's first impressions? Would you not like to give yours or why you picked it? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I picked it. Because I love these old classic horror movies. And with the theme of like choosing um, with the eights, it fit in. And it's been a long time since I've seen this particular one. So I thought I would share it. So first okay. impressions. <laughs> I'll go. Okay. Uh First time watching it, I had seen Abbott and Costello like clips, especially I feel like a year ago or two, I went down like a rabbit hole of Abbott and Costello bits online, you know, starting with the who's on first or who's on, yeah, who's on first bit. So I had never actually seen one of their, their movies and I'm just really happy you picked this. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Like way too much, especially the setup, the beginning, just that the language that they use, just like there's so much just verbal jokes. And I noticed even like Mel Brooks would take from Abbott and Costello, specifically at the very beginning when uh, the, one of the lady comes to like pick up one of the, the packages or whatever, uh, is Abbott? Abbott is the... Abbott's the straight man. He, he played Chick. Costello. Costello is the, the chubby guy? Yes. Um, so, so, yeah, so Costello goes up to her, and she has, like, uh, that fur, like a little fox fur <laughs> thing, and he goes at it like uh, Costello goes, arr, arr, arr. and Mel Brooks did that in Young Frankenstein. Igor mm -hmm. did that to Madeline Kahn, which is still great because they took it over the top, right? But mm -hmm. just seeing seeing how, like, this is, what, 48? Like, how rich, like, their humor was. Like, there was slapstick, but there's a bunch of just uh, verbal magistry. <laughs> that I, yeah, that I just really enjoyed. And just, yeah, I mean... I, yeah, I, I can't say, I guess, enough. you know, it's not like perfect movie, but it's it's pretty solid. It's a, like Ed Holds Water. I didn't mm -hmm. see any like racial slurs <laughs> or, or, or misogynism. Uh, I mean, there, I mean, but to the extent of how yeah. it was like, you know, like open face type of type of thing, mm -hmm. um, if anything, Costello was being taken advantage, you know, but, uh, yeah, I just, yeah, everything I was like, there's no blackface, <laughs> no, like, you know, any black and white movie of the time, you're always like, oh, that's, I guess, a Native American character? I guess that's, you know, so anyway. Yes. I, first impression, big fan. I would, you know. Be, I would be okay with watching their other monster movies. Mm -hmm. Back at you. JP? Uh, not my first time watching it. Uh, we actually saw, I remember the first time I watched it was with Michaela. And I believe it's funny because we busted out a DVD and the DVD wasn't even opened yet. But the first time we saw it was, I think, back in our uh, college that we used to go to during these movie nights that were that was held by our um, one of our film professors. And it's so crazy because it's so classic old Hollywood, but so crazy, like, like you know, the idea of even, like, a crossover. Because they basically, it's funny, uh, that, this is one of, my, one of my other first thoughts. It's called They Meet Frankenstein, right? But, like, there's two <laughs> other monsters, and I feel like they share the least amount of screen time with Frankenstein. Well, I mean, and that's like we can we're gonna get into that later. Okay, but like other than that, like it's like it's it, like I, 
uh, same thing that Dina said, like at like this uh, second time watching it, like, I was holding back my breath like, oh, is there any weird stuff in it? It's like, no, it's, you know, it's a pretty fun movie. I'll admit, I think the only thing that I didn't like was that for me, it felt a little too long. But I don't even know how long the film is, but that was just me. I was probably just a tired little boy. It was an movie. hour and a half. It was an hour and a half? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> then, but, uh, but I feel you. It, it was siesta time. And I haven't been sleeping well because of the construction. <laughs> and like at 6 a.m. they park. And then around 7. Oh, listen, 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 listen. This is y'all's fault for watching it late. Because it's a 1948 film. You know you can't be watching this before you go to bed, bro. Like, <laughs> I, No, I watched it today at like 1. Because then I was going to watch it earlier. And then I had to help Jason with an audition. And... Uh, yeah, so I was definitely struggling a little bit just because I was I was tired. And the, the construction people need that three. And then I'm like, now it's too late to take a nap. Because then I'm just going to like oversleep to like six. And then I won't be able to go to sleep tonight. <sighs> that is so true, though. That is so anyway. true. Anyway. I, I, it was a fun movie. Like, it's it's... Like it has is like it's a great it, it just has really funny great bits and like I will talk about it later but I definitely I actually really liked how they ended this film it was I thought it was one of the most clever damn things it was just uh great like great a recommend ten out of ten okay Steve uh I absolutely enjoyed this movie uh I was. At first, I'm not going to lie, I was dreading watching the film a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. Because I was like, am I really going to like this? Let's see. And since there's a lot of very physical comedy, a lot of Chaplin-esque uh, style, uh, I saw for sure what Dino saw. That is like, oh, for sure Mel Brooks uh, has stole from me, from here, you know, from this <laughs> well of this pot of knowledge here uh and uh i wasn't necessarily looking for something to upset me or whatever a black phrase or something like that but i didn't feel it in this movie uh the only thing that i was but i did get that payoff kind of in the end i don't know if you guys felt that way but i did uh was that i expected the monsters to be scary and like throughout throughout the whole thing, I was like, these are just silly ass monsters, right? Because uh, even Dracula, I was like, why are you doing this whole thing all the time? And it's because of the whole eye thing. But I'm like, that's all you. you. I'm like, that's all, that's all you got, bro. And they were scary. It was no, 1948. But, they were scary. No, but what was what was scary? At least I don't know if you guys felt it. Was Frankenstein at the very end? Like, I felt that was, like, the moment. And I was like, yes, I'm glad this movie had this because it made it made, it made made that more awesome. I, I, didn't, I wanted that, just that little hint of, like, there's danger there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I in, in, enjoyed the movie a lot. Uh, first impression, I loved it. First time watching it, uh, at least consciously. I feel like I seen Abbott and Costello movies when I was young. Very young, but I don't even remember. I have a recollection, but uh, yeah, very uh, Three Stooges too. There's <laughs> there's a lot of Three Stooges type of comedy here. Uh, yeah, loved it. Yeah, no, like like I said, this is one of my favorite like films. I'm a huge monster like Universal monster fan, and I and I just love like classic cinema in general. Um, like they really don't write dialogue the way you see in like pre fifties movies anymore, you know, like the fact that like they're saying these things so quickly and smoothly, and like some of these jokes are really like complicated, you know, like it's it's not like a simple like your mom like it's a your mom joke, but like they're using another layer of something, so you're just like oh my god, <laughs> you know. Well. Like, if you if you think about it, I mean that was kind of Abbott and Costello's shtick, right? Mm-hmm. Was just especially because they also they came from the radio and theater, mm-hmm. right? So like on the radio, it's like it's your words that you have to kind of get across. 
so they were all about like fast talking and just oh, yeah. you know jumping on bits left and right and i i really appreciated that and yeah costello's like just like like the, the idea of like he what was it? he was like, like yeah, he was and, and then he like moved the one finger over <laughs> Uh, there were so many great moments. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, and like the cool thing is, is for all of the like major like movie monsters, they managed to keep their original actors, uh, except for Frankenstein, who was played by Glenn. I think his last name was Strange. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Which is crazy because like I can't tell. Like the the makeup literally looks like. The Frankenstein's that we've seen in like the movies, like, could you tell? Yeah. Okay, I guess because you're an actual like fan, <laughs> like, because I've seen, How dare you. I've seen both uh, Frankenstein and Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein, and they it looked like the same guy to me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, the, the, eye, the eyes were definitely different. Mm -hmm. Kind of how they like swoop. That that was the the makeup and the eyes felt different. And sadly, he's only a Mr. Strange. Yeah. Um, Not quite a doctor. <laughs> but um, saying that, like, what was... I want to foremost thank Michaela for introducing me to a movie of a genre I'm not so familiar with. The first time I've heard of Abba and Costello. I'm a bit familiar with comedy horror, like The Monsters, which I know is a TV show. The Adams Family, Beetlejuice. This slapstick comedy that is depicted here is super classic. I'm familiar with the Three Stooges and the other skinny fat duo called Laurel and Hardy. I had never known about Abo and Costello. But this movie specifically answers a question for me. Is this the first movie in general where they have all the monster, mon, mon, all the monsters together? Like, cause here I had never seen them all together. And this was my first time seeing them together in, in a movie in its earliest Hollywood. So I'm curious as to if this was the original movie that all the monsters came out. And that to me gives me this weird theory that Hotel Transylvania copied from Hotel Transform Transylvania was highly influenced from this movie. And I can see that a lot through this film, like the hotel, you know, everything. So it like adding one and one, I feel like my theories could be correct you know um but another thing about this movie um the effects were fucking amazing ah amazing and to this day they look fresh as fuck for a 1948 film doing that kind of like animation to image transition that was amazing to see i was in shock and i was like oh whoa what a good transfer, like the bat to the human, like the animation was sleek. It wasn't like distorted. It was just like sleek and perfectly transitioned. And as someone who is kind of learning animation, some of my animation looks like, you know, like it doesn't look smooth. And that's because I'm a newbie. But obviously these guys are professional experts. That's why they came out with the movie. But in the general sense, it's 1948. And that effect is fresh as fuck. I feel like they made the effect with Windows 98 media player or media movie maker. <laughs> like, that's what my <laughs> edits looked like when I had Windows what? 98. <laughs> I'm going to see myself out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Saying that, uh, what was your favorite monster in the whole thing? Why? 
Hmm. I I'm gonna I'm gonna like. I you think can spoil. not as like, I think my favorite monster, like personally, was the Wolfman. But no one can deny or ignore fucking um, Bella Lugosi no. as Dracula because that was one of the crazy things about this movie is like yeah like yes it is an Abbott and Costello movie, but it's also a monster movie. <laughs> Like they took they took the 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 Universal like it did look it did feel like an old time like Universal Studio monster film because like I've seen um, the Frankenstein's movie we I have seen uh, uh, the Wolfman and I have seen at least one of the Bela Lugosi films because of you so I know how they feel I know the general vibe of it and this felt like it mm -hmm. even towards the end where it's like when you defeat the monster and like. Not the monster doesn't doesn't none of the monsters necessarily die. It's kind of like okay, no, they they no, they did die. Yeah, most of them did die. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. My bad. Not we, not like we, we we don't see them die though. We we don't like in the other films like it's straight up like oh yeah, there's no way that they got out of that. But in this one is like it was enough where it's like oh shit, like they're gone by the end of this film too. And um, but like. Bella Lugosi takes it so fucking serious that it's, it's because like even during Costello's like silly shenanigans and antics, like there has to be a few takes where he breaks, even though like the takes that they did use in the film, <laughs> like no, he's still straight up in character and is just like literally in like on the ride. It's so well, crazy because JP, <laughs> what what why do you think he was? Lifting his cape. <laughs> well, I mean, that was like the big thing in the original Dracula. Like that's how he like controlled all yeah. of like the people. But and, like they spent so much time in that film just recording that man's it, eyes. I was gonna say if he was laughing or chuckling underneath the cape, <laughs> he, he made he he made up for it with his eye acting because he fucking loved to stare at the camera. <laughs> I know, but yeah, no. It, like I feel like the 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 sh the show stealer. My personal favorite was Lon Chaney as a Wolfman, but my the show stealer is Bela Lugosi as Dracula. Mm -hmm. I I think you know I'm kind of there with JP that the Wolfman has kind of like the biggest arc, or is right there with probably the most lines because you see him. The most, yeah. Yeah, kind of the most. He kind of sets it up from London already and then makes it over in a day. <laughs> like he shows up in a day. And uh, I? <laughs> did they say what city they were in? No, right? I don't remember. I can't imagine. <laughs> okay. Uh so yeah, so yeah, he just he just seemed to have, I guess, the biggest arc if you will, of just the fact that he's a monster, but he's actually trying to help out. And he, you know, it's one of those, like, he's cursed, but he's trying to do the, the right thing. But there's something about Bela Lugosi that well, is such, it's just so endearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's like you can't keep your eyes away from him, literally, because he's just, he's just like, you know, a, a, wait, where is my eyes? There we go. Just <laughs> like uh, a, a very, you know, like shot of just like, just my eyes, zoom in. Um, so, but yeah, I think the Wolfman, just because he he, he had the most action. In yeah. The world, right? Right. Uh, some of the dialogue of Bela Lugosi was pretty great, though. Um, <laughs> and I, w I will say they were... I had huge Scooby Doo vibes, also, right? Like you can <laughs> clearly see where Scooby Doo got a lot of their stuff from, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad the monsters were playing it straight, you know. And again, I gotta you, we gotta put ourselves in 1948, right? Like they didn't do much, but just their appearances were scary enough, right? Right, right. Steve. Uh, I gotta say that I mean I understand the point that JP brought to the table 
understand the point Dino brought to the table, but uh, I feel you guys are not giving credit where credit is due, and I feel the best monster out of them all was the Invisible Man. So. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking about saying that, but I was just like, it's such a great like cap off of the movie, but I'm just like. It's disrespectful to all the other monsters. Like, because then it's like, who who is the Invisible Man? Is that whoever did the voice of the Invisible Man? Or is it the props department that that did the the Invisible, uh, invisible Man? Uh, oh, yeah. He wasn't even credited in the, fi- in the final cut of the film, but it's great. <laughs> I, it, I, it's, and also, like, the fact that they took the time to do the the cigarette lighting gag mm-hmm. is like that's money. It's for back then, like like you know, it, it, if they did it in a, in a black screen or if they did it practically where the cigarette was actually there on set with them, like that's time and money just for that one joke, and it's so fucking great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like Lon Chaney really had such a great performance in this film. Like, I always forget how heartbreaking he makes his character every yeah. single time. You know, like, and and not just in this film. Like, when he did uh, The Indestructible Man, like, Lon Chaney just, he just knows how to look like shit. <laughs> like, he always looks so he, he, terrible he does like like he, somewhat pun intended he does look like a sad dog he does like, he has the sad he puppy does. eyes <laughs> you know um but like what i was trying to explain earlier is it's kind of a sh- well not a shame because um boris karloff is the original frankenstein he's the one that everyone knows uh he's the one who like originated that role and he did the first three movies he did frankenstein bride of frankenstein and son of frankenstein and then after son of frankenstein he realized that frankenstein's character was used more or like frankenstein's monster was used more as an object instead of a character it was always like something that someone was going to summon to like wreak havoc versus like him actually going through that arc which is part of why he quit and focused his um, acting career on others because he was like already 40 by then and he just barely got his career going. So that's part of why he wasn't part of this. Um, But yeah, no, I think the actor who played Frankenstein, like, I mean, I don't think he can ever really fill those boots, but he did it like, you know, good effort. (laughs) And I can already see Jack Pierce rolling in his grave over that black lipstick. So how dare you say that makeup looks as good? Did he not have black lipstick in the other films? Not as like it looked better. Okay. <laughs> All right. See, this is why you know, this, why, this is why Kay was here. So <laughs> now, now I know. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really enjoyed watching Lon Chaney this time around. And I think we should also talk about the women in this film because I think they are so incredible. Like the performances, especially um, what's her name? Uh, she played. Um... Oh, real quick, while you think of the of the women, mm-hmm. you know, I was about to say that the actual monster in the movie is the owner of the uh, of that museum or whatever. Oh my god! Like, like our, if we're if we're being real. It's, you know, the guy that's trying to make some buckaroos out of all this, you know, scaring people. Well, and, you know, um, but yeah, no, like, uh, Lenore Capitalism. Offered... Capitalism is the true monster. Always. Oh, but uh, the actresses Tommy's Lenore Aubert and Jane Ra- uh, Randolph uh, playing both, like, the insurance reporter lady and the actual mastermind behind all of this in her own way. Um. I, I think that like she likes um, the lady who played Sandra was a really great villain, and they were both like so glamorous in their own ways, you know. So, what do you guys think about the women of this film? I loved uh, Sandra. 
she killed it for me. And uh, and and yeah, the yeah, Sandra Sandra to me was like the the best, 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 best. Mm-hmm. I think it's so funny because you know they're both you know, both of their goal is to like just fucking trick Costello's character into like giving them the goods, both information wise and, and the brain. And it's just so crazy because he thinks he has the upper hand. <laughs> and it's so, I, I feel so bad for him because like in the beginning of the film, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like they're playing against type and stuff. Like like this chubby little dork has a beautiful girlfriend and turns out, oh no, like she's only doing it because she sees him how he is. Like just this silly simpleton who, if they take their brain, will make a more subservient uh, fucking monster. It's like, oh gosh, like. Which I think is crazy because could you imagine if they actually did that? <laughs> Fra- Frankenstein doing like just a costume is like non first. You know. <laughs> uh, uh, like if we, if we talk about the jokes later, I, uh, I will say you know like I thought those female characters are pretty strong, and especially like Sandra actually kind of stood up to Dracula. You know, because clearly, I mean, you can only do so much against Dracula. That was like, I think we should pull back, right? Like, she was the one really leading the charge. Though. And then I just also love the idea that it's like an insurance agent. Fur, fur, fur. Like, that was, you know, like, it wasn't like a, a you know, FBI agent or right. Scotland Yard or whatever. It was like, oh, it's Jake from State Farm. I think we should, you know, put on the brakes, Dracula. I, I gotta say, that's probably why um, who, who, the other actress is, is it uh, Joan? Yeah. Yeah, that's the character's name, Joan. Joan. Uh, uh, yeah, Joan. Like, oh, that's funny. Her name is, her. the actress's name is Jane, but she plays Joan. Um, like, that, I, like, that's when her, when points for her in my brain got deducted. Like, how terrible... <laughs> That she was like spying and inspecting the place is like no, like no, duh, you got caught. She wasn't being really conspicuous about it, like <laughs> looking at the books, like while the like while Sandra was still there, even though like she could tell, like oh, something's up with her. I should probably be careful of her too. Ooh, look, information, <laughs> like right in front of her, like <laughs> like you are bad at your job. <laughs> but also, we can say Sandra. Right? Yeah. Uh, Sandra is also bad at her job because she left Frankenstein's, like, manual in the powder room? Like, <laughs> come on. Get out of here. Uh-huh. I mean, and, and you have a lab and everything, and you're going to leave it in your dressing room? Nah. I mean, so, can, we, can we be real and talk about powder rooms? They were really code to like do cocaine (laughs) yeah (laughs) they still are code to do cocaine (laughs) and besides cocaine was kind of like legal then anyways yeah it was in coca-cola it was in coca-cola they actually had like pep pills that's what pep pills were yeah um oh i've got a migraine here have some cocaine and they both were they both were snooping around each other's stuff. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, you guys aren't good. But yeah, it was, oh man, I just loved it, right? That they were going, they were both kind of going after Costello and how jealous Abbott <laughs> was. Just like, yeah. That, I'm not another bit that they probably used in their duo trip troop. It's like, let's say if you had three women, I like if you had three women, I would definitely take one of them off of you. All right, you'll have the third. I mean, do you have suit? Uh, no, like the joke is, uh, let's say that you have Sandra, Je- uh, Joan, and let's say you also had Mary. And then he, the joke is, you can have Mary, uh, yeah. the imaginary <sighs> one. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they love doing math jokes. Right, if you think about it, all it is is math and equate. Yeah. Like all their jokes is just like, 
literal, literary, and math all put together. Yeah. And well, I then, love it. like, I guess that like nicely segues into like, what was your favorite bit in the movie? Like, what was like what really got you? I want to answer this one because, like, for I me. Guess. Because it, it was a bit that I actually was starting to get annoyed with. <laughs> and it's when Dracula is starting to come out of the, the casket in the museum at that fake-ass museum. And, you know, he's yelling out to Castell, to, to Abbott's character, like, Jack! 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 And I was like, oh, my God, you can only do this bit so many times. But then, like, by either the third or the fourth bit, he, like, <laughs> the candle falls and he's, like he lost his voice. <laughs> and I thought like, okay, this redeems like the uh, how many times him yelling like it was like, okay, we get the joke. We get it. Uh, boy who cries wolf, whatever, like yelling your fucking throat out. But that that final like beat of him like he can't even he can't even panic properly anymore. He he's he's so white as a ghost and so like out of energy that he is and he commits to it. He commits to it. Like that that was my personal favorite bit. Cause like it 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 it, it won me back at the end. <laughs> Dino? Oh then no, nah, you said Dino now. No, 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 no. Okay. Either way. <laughs> well, go back to someone else. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll go. No, I think my favorite bit this time around was uh, when you find out that Sandra was turned into a vampire and she's trying to lure Wilbur back to the island. And, like, uh, there's, like, this one, like, he pricks himself and, like, the whole time he's like, ah, I don't know what you are. And so he keeps, like, making jokes about band-aids and... Um, and how like he really actually doesn't want to go with her, and uh, and at the end he's like, "No, chick, you can have Sandra." <laughs> I think that was it's a really good scene. It's a really good scene, especially how straight she plays it too. Yeah, because it's literally it's it's two movies in one. It's one of the few, the few times where the 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 two genres couldn't clash or couldn't mesh. Well, but see, that's what because because she's so playing good. she's playing the the universal movie horror. And, and Costello is playing fucking Costello. <laughs> All right. Either one? I'll go. Uh, my favorite bit was the the bit where, like, he would, like, it was a uh, throughout the film bit that he was basically telling the dude, yo, I see what I saw, what I saw. You know what I'm saying? I see what I saw, what I saw. And uh, specifically the one that they're in the wall and the wall keeps like turning around <laughs> and throughout the whole time, like they coordinate it in such a way that the other dude doesn't see them at all. Uh, that was that was a cool bit for me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, I will say kind of JP, the, the whole chick uh is is pretty great and especially when he like and then he tries to whistle <laughs> you know and, and and that's just perfect because that's uh acting exercise in itself right you're gonna say chick a hundred times let's see you do it and how many different ways you can do it right mm -hmm. um and just i mean yeah, I, I, I think, and Jason was watching part of it. Oh, speaking of the devil, ooh, Jason's coming in. But uh, I think without Costello, you don't have this movie. Like, no. I know that playing the straight man can be pretty, you know, it's a pretty hard job as well. But I mean, I feel the whole movie just really relies on Costello, right? Because he's the everyman. If, or at least that's how I see him, right? right, right. Like Abbott being the straight man. Like we, if, and maybe I'm wrong. We we see ourselves, or maybe I see myself as Costello, right? Because he's mm -hmm. 
he's the lovable loser, if you will, or just like, oh my God, I got two women that are into me. Like, today is my day. Today is my lucky day. And then just like, everything <laughs> seems to be happening bad to him. And, you know, you end up rooting for him. So hell? just okay. Costello in general, he's my favorite bit. And just yes. just Costello. Uh, anything he did, I, I just loved it. Like, I ate I, it up. Like, like, add on to that. Like, those were also some of my favorite parts when, like, he's being intimate with Sandra. Like, he's he skips. He actually, he's so, like, he's so oh sweet. God. Like, it's it's not like... Fucking in a field of flowers when there's no flowers. Yes! <laughs> like, 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 they're, like, when they're walking in the garden and he actually straight up does this. <laughs> you know because because guys just want to be sweet and like it's it's a very interesting portrayal of romance which like I, I get that they were trying to be silly but i thought it was adorable you know when the dracula was turning into a bat i was laughing at that <laughs> the animation it, 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 i was gonna say it, it, it started off as a fucking uh, looney tunes cartoon so i thought it was i i i it's so crazy because you could see the, the the edits in between the animation. It's like, oh, freeze frame, animate the trans uh, the transformation, and then add the other frame. Those are oh, pretty. Oh, uh, fuck you, JP. How about you get some 1948 equipment and you try to do it better? Hold on, hold on. I'm about to I'm about to make us into the Invisible Man right now. Oh, ah, ah, ah. oh wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh my God, That's what I thought. Oh my God. That's Fuck. what I thought. <laughs> also, that Apple bit where he's trying to decide if he would like actually get caught, like stealing like some fruit from the. Bowl. Oh my God! Yeah, that was another bit that, for me, was frustrating because it's like, it's like no, you're gonna get eat by by the wolf man, but just showing it. He, you could see the fucking angel and, and devil was like, like, no, take the apple. He won't know. I was like, no, he probably will, though. <laughs> I think, okay, I'll be real. I probably hated that bit because I was like, that's something I probably wouldn't have ended up doing. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, he got he got extra food. I'll take it. Nah, I shouldn't do Just that. Just the idea that someone would count it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Someone counts. It's not like the dad that like marks the 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 liquor bottles, like making right. sure the kids don't come and and and, and steal any. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, everyone had to play it straight, and he had to play the goofy, the scary, you know. Yeah. Because even even once, um, Abbott like realized what was going on. He wasn't terrified, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was maybe scared, but not terrified, right? right. Whereas Costello was still playing at like, you know, on, on another level. And I think that, you know, really made it. Oh, and, yeah. And like, right now. Uh, no, I was going to say like, uh, like another thing that like totally rings to that. Is when uh, Lon Chaney is trying to warn Abbott and Cassell, it's like, hey, like, like you, I think you guys are actually at Dracula's place. And you know, at this at this point in the movie, there's still some doubt that you know, is this all legit? Like, even Costello is like, I don't know if this is legit or not. But then it cuts to the phone. He totally leaves it. And he's trying to book it out the door. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> The, the idea of blocking the door also in one of the rooms, because I didn't, you know, I didn't ah. quite think about it. And I mean, even the Big Lebowski has done that bit, you know, of just like, you know, I mean, Big Lebowski, he like uh, uh, hammers a, a, like a two by four and then puts his chair, even though it's a door that opens outward. Yes. And, and so like they did that as well, of like block the door, you know, so... That I mean, just like yeah, Talk about, like, yeah, and like that's like so interesting too. Is like how there are similar like horror tropes that we all like identify with even today that they manage to like turn on its head because that's definitely one of them. Because like, how many times have you seen them like brace yourself, get in the door, stay safe, you know? But I 
yeah, no, like there's it's such a solid <laughs> film and it's just a joy to watch. So I guess with that, is there anything specific any of you guys want to like talk yeah. about in the film or Oh shit? <laughs> Sorry. That was an inappropriate response to that. It's pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have the Abbot to my Costello right here now, so there you yeah, go. we're complete. Well, were you able to uh, watch some of it, Jason? Or fortunately, I only saw like the first ten minutes. Mm. But you had seen the movie before, right? Okay. I've never seen that. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Well, I guess with that, like I've covered everything that I kind of wanted to cover. Is there anything anyone else wanted to kind of talk about or get into? Um, well, I, I mean, I guess we can mention just that they ended up doing a bunch of other ones, right? Oh, yeah. it, 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 that's how successful, again, for like the year for 48, this to come out and it'd be just like, oh, well, there was a great response. Let's, uh, you know, bring out all the other monsters, right? They did more Adam Costello monster movies. Yeah, they did like five more, I think. Jesus, really? Uh, and then they even they even met up with um... like I think like after this one, like not only did Abbott and Costello have their crossovers, but it was really popular to take like comedy acts and put them in the same kind of situation. You know, like um, there was like I I know that there there's a a weird group of kids that's kind of like the little rascals before the little rascals were a thing. And they were put in like a Frankenstein meets movie. Like it was a very popular crossover, you know. And it's kind of interesting to see like how long Hollywood's actually been doing this, taking two franchises that really shouldn't be put together. It, it's it's very much like a what's so like like a, a you, you see on the VHS or DVD bin at like Walmart or whatever. Like I think they did like like Alvin and the Chipmunks meets yada yada, you know. Well, yeah, well, well like, the, the, the next movie was Abbott and Costello meet the killer Boris Karloff. Like, that's the title. Like, they want you to know. Like, yeah. hey, you're going to get Boris Karloff for this one, so yeah. you're for the next one. But huh? that's part of the title. Like, it's not just like meet the killer, it's the killer Boris Karloff. Let's yeah. make sure that's like part of the title. Well, because he met, they met everybody else. And like by then, like I said, Boris Karloff wasn't doing Frankenstein because he felt like Frankenstein wasn't a character anymore. He was more almost like an object, and he kind of read the writing on the wall and left while he while the leaving was good. Because I think in Son of Frankenstein, he spends most of the time, like the monster spends most of the time comatose, and that's like a trope that keep continues on. I mean, they did Abbott and Costello uh, back in. They went down to Mexico and did uh, Avon Costello meet the uh, the Chupacabra. <laughs> they could have. I mean, they went to space. They met the Foreign Legion. They uh, the Mexican Hayride. Um, Africa screams. Then they 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 have a movie with the Invisible Man, and uh, they go to Mars. And then they have. The could you? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I think. Might Could you imagine, that. like, both of them being in, like, their late 90s or, like, early 100s? It's like, Alvin and Costello meet the Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Alvin and Costello meet Jigsaw. <laughs> well, hey, JP, hold your horses. They brought back the Three Stooges to do an original movie. Maybe oh, Abbott and Costello oh. should be brought back. And uh, they yeah, need some that... of the new... Uh, you know, Michael Myers or whatever. Isn't that the one that they had Snooky in? Wasn't Snooky yeah, in that it one? It is. Snooky was in what? In that new Three Stooges movie. <laughs> You're like, Snooky was in that movie. Like, like, just saying that, like, it's so funny to me, like, how much of, like, how much that hasn't changed, how much we like to make fun of the things that scare us, you know? Because, like, this is, you could definitely put this in the same kind of, like, as a forefather to like the scary movie like franchise and like right. stuff like that in their own way, you know. 
it's really interesting how like every time like uh producers think that we're losing like like they say well if we make it funny i mean we kind of had that for a little while with uh jordan peele and uh, mm -hmm. michael key because they did what they did uh the one with the cat keanu and they made another film together mm -hmm. but that i don't think you're gonna ever do a film like again with each other Probably well not. if you think about it uh there's uh was a happy death day right yeah. that that yeah. mixes um well, that's still it's kind of hard day oh. and a slasher, and then because that did so well within a year, the same company I don't know if it, it was the same actress or not. Uh, it was then they did like a Freaky Friday, they brought in Vince Vaughn. Yeah, I, did. just, I didn't see that one, but just the idea of like, oh, this this mashup work of this uh kind of like comedy and horror, let's right. find another comedy horror kind of. Uh, it's very interesting that that's something that we like to combine. Yeah. I was, I think I was telling Kayla like I would want to see like who would be like the next duo to make these movies. I couldn't help but bring out like like maybe Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart making another film. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, you know because Dwayne is so charismatic and cool, and then Kevin Hart is Kevin Hart. <laughs> point that i'm trying to make is like there really isn't anything like new like we have like a rich history of doing things like this again this. yeah and, it, and it's this is probably like, where it started yeah probably one of them yeah for sure and it's just always like kind of fun to like especially since like this is such a good fun movie like i i'm it's definitely something that like i will watch again <laughs> I will make JP watch again. So, so if this movie came out in 48, which one was the first monster movie that came out? Was it Dracula was, or was it Frankenstein? It was Dracula and then Frankenstein and then Wolfman. So it was, what, do you know what year though? Was it like 1910, 1918, something like no, that? No, no, calm down, calm down. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, if it was that no, old, Bill no, no, Ghosty no, no. would not look that good. <laughs> no, that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that Dracula was 1940. Oh, no, I'm thinking also because of, uh, is it Nosferatu or whatever? The... Well, Nosferatu was a silent film. That one was in the 20s. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, I think there wasn't there already a, a, a silent Dracula movie as well? Or am I just thinking of Nosferatu? Uh, you're thinking of uh, Nosferatu. Um, and also, there was technically, uh, the first film ever made was Frankenstein. Thomas Edison oh. made a Frankenstein movie. Oh, well, there oh. you go. So, I mean, yeah. So, if, you, if, if we think about also, like, everything's been done. They were really this is, like, 20, 30 years yeah. after they first started, mm -hmm. like, doing films, right? right? That this movie came out. And they're already, like... I guess we got we ran out of ideas, guys. Let's well, let's get something we've done and redo it. Well, like they were so popular when they first came out too, though. Like that's the thing. Yeah, no, nah, we're we're seeing the the <laughs> filmography. And and I, I, Dracula I and Frankenstein came, came out, out the same year. It's a 1931, and since so you talked about the Invisible Man spoilers. Um, they end up meeting the Invisible Man uh, three years later. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, no, it's just, and it's yeah, like. I think they talk about that a little bit in the movie uh, Ed Wood. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, Bella Lugosi is uh, infinitely jealous of Boris Koloff because Frankenstein became, like, much, much bigger than Dracula. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, it, it's kind of like one of those weird things. Like, they had such a interesting friendship <laughs> Bella Lugosi and Boris Carla actually if it wasn't for like Bella Lugosi was supposed to be the the original Frankenstein but he turned it down because he was doing Dracula yep. I can't imagine Bella Lugosi doing Frankenstein at all like can you like but no but this... that's what he was known for at the time like because he was a tall like he was one of the tallest like actors and that's and that's what they tended to do with movie monsters and then, like, someone was just like, no, like, I have this guy, uh, Boris Karloff. He, he's done some good things. And, like, Boris Karloff himself says that, like, he thinks anyone could have played the monster. It's just he was lucky enough to be the one chosen. 
So imagine that. Yeah. Friend. One of the best movie lines of all time. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but like, and like, they were, it's kind of interesting because like, I think Bella, like, like yeah, no, it's, they had such an interesting friendship. <laughs> and interesting like, though, overall, maybe in that moment, or to a certain ex extent, Frankenstein might be more famous, but I feel like Dracula is bigger in the macro part of history. Am I wrong? No, I, I guess, think you're absolutely right. I think in the I moment, it was probably Frankenstein, because, I mean, he's the one that ends up getting the title in the film. Yeah. No, so, well, guess, so in the moment, I'm betting it was Frankenstein. Well, he, but what he's talking yeah. about is, like, in the zeitgeist of popular yeah, culture, yeah, yeah. like, Dracula's a bigger... Yeah, deal than Frankenstein, and I think that's just because you have different variations of Dracula. Yeah, well, and vampires. Bad, the vampire legend is like something that's really ancient and like that spans across different cultures. And on top of that, um, I think that there's just more history when it comes to vampires in general. Whereas, like Frankenstein was a concoction of a young author. Mary Shelley, right? You know, like, and I, I think that Boris Karloff, like, that's what makes Boris Karloff's per like performance of that like so powerful is like he really put it on the map. Yeah, and I guess technically speaking, Frankenstein's more, I guess, new age. Yeah, because because you know he's he's a creation of science where the other two is like straight up like ooh mystical stuff and like ancient like legend, evil. yeah, ancient primal evil. So like the Um, yeah, first of all, just like the, for me, just the fact that Frankenstein was written as a competition amongst <laughs> friends at yeah. like a, a lake cabin of like, I, it was either a weekend or a week. Mm -hmm. Everyone had like the same amount of time to try to write the scariest story. Yeah. And, and like, that's how that Frankenstein was written. And it, it's mind blowing. But just to go back, I guess, with Mel Brooks also, kind of like, Without this movie, without this have done have done so well, I don't think studios would have been so open to also green light something like Young Frankenstein. Even though Mel Brooks was huge at the time, mm -hmm. it's definitely something that's like, yeah, this could work, you know, because uh, Costello would break the fourth wall a lot, at least of just like staring, you know, yeah, yeah, like a lot of just staring right at the camera and stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, definitely. No, it, it really does set a precedent. The the original Jim from The Office. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's really interesting to just like see like things that we consider like normal in comedy, like and like seeing how far it goes back is always just so fascinating to me. Yeah, man. So no, yeah, uh, no new stories, and you know we think <laughs> everything that we see. For the first time it's like you know adolescence even it's like oh that's the first time it existed not knowing it happened a hundred years before that yeah yeah or just i remember i still remember when i found out that he is not frankenstein he's frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. like i remember it was i think it was in high school or whatever like one of those hitchcock moments where the camera like <laughs> I was, I was like, no, it's Frankenstein. I was like, no, it's Frankenstein's monster. So I, feel, I feel like it was one of those early, like, uh, tests of, of, like, a true nerd. Like, a true nerd knows, like, like, the line isn't, Luke, I'm your father. It's, no, I am your father. Or, you know, that okay, sort of thing. Nerd. I know, I guess, like, it's so true. Like, it's always, like, it's always the, the one person that's like, actually, actually... <laughs> Well, I guess with that, do you want to start final thoughts? Sure. Okay, final thoughts. I believe seeing a remake of this would be phenomenal. But still withholding the time frame, it's originally stuck because the slapstick comedy would, would dent. You know what I mean? Would dent. Other than that, if it was modernized, I'm not sure how that would go about when everyone's on their cell phones and that slapstick comedy wouldn't apply to now. But um, yeah, that's just like my final thoughts. And 
this movie's great. It's phenomenal. It's original, <laughs> classic. And I think it holds a good record for being the best at what it is. Um, I'm not familiar with Abel and Costello, but I do love comedy horror. And this was good for me. So thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Final thought. Uh, final thought. It's a great movie, especially if you love Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Because uh, a lot of the score will remind you of uh, that Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? stuff. Um, if you like fun comedies, is great. It's definitely one of those films that is great to just have on the background. It, it, it's, it's great. It's a lot of physical comedy, so you don't necessarily need the sound unless you want to get into the plots and stuff. Uh, I wish The Wolfman was just a tad bit scary. Uh, just a tad bit. Because they made him very silly, like falling around and stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, never really chasing stuff and pushing uh, the table uh, <laughs> and stuff like. <laughs> it was 1938. Hey, man, he could have scratched something, at least a furniture or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, he could have drowned a child or two. Yeah, just you know, just <laughs> at least two babies. That's that's all. Uh, but great movie. Would definitely, I would definitely recommend uh, not to uh, necessarily the younger folks, the younger kids, because they might not be into the whole black and white unless you tell them it's vintage and they might like it. Uh, but um, I will recommend it to anybody that enjoys good retro comedy you know what i'm saying and that's my final thought okay. sure. um I, I i would definitely recommend it to like like most folks that i know for sure like it's so crazy because i'm like i only know most of these like m m monster movies because of michaela and so like like as a person who's not into horror or is not into monster films like, I feel like if, if if you know someone who's a bit reluctant, even though it's better to have the context ahead of time before watching this film, you get a great appreciation. I feel like this is a good, like, intro to someone who's rather reluctant. Like, oh, no, I'm not into that. It's like, no, no, no. It's great. So this is a very, like, it's monster movie light, even though, like, it does, it does stay true to the tropes. And it, like I said before, it does feel like it's literally both a monster movie and an Abaddon Costello film. Like it, the way that they somehow sewn those two together, like it seems very, it's very seamless. Like you, you could tell like the folks who made this movie, they cared that much. Like they cared that much about the monsters and they did care about the comedic duo. Like you could tell folks who cared and knew what they were doing, like made this film. So I would definitely recommend to those who, who are a bit more on the reluctant side uh, of old monster movies it just says a nice little transition a nice little like uh i, I, I probably already said it i can't <laughs> say it again but i definitely would uh, recommend it to like most folks uh dino yeah so you see i was worried i was thought more abbott and costello were definitely going to be more sticky you know maybe that's why i haven't watched this movie i hadn't watched this movie or any of their other movies because of that but after watching this i'm like okay i'm, I'm definitely gonna be more open-minded or even watch one or two of their other movies just to kind of see what what else they got right mm -hmm. i just really enjoyed this movie I, it's it really surprised me and uh i, I want to say hey man hey steve like, did you see how big of shoes Frankenstein has to wear to look that big? Try running around in that. Like, I've had to do shows where I've had, like, five-inch or six-inch stiletto heels. It, it ain't easy doing stage combat with that. So, you know, him having to walk around slowly to get around stuff, like, it, it makes sense. All right? It makes sense. Uh, oh, last thing, Costello doing like the, 
like <laughs> and then explain that and then hey 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 i wasn't talking about frankenstein bro he's talking about the wolfman I was talking about the Wolfman the ripped up the, the little chair in the, <laughs> in the room that wasn't even shown to the camera. It was just like, you, you never saw it. You got to see him do this at least. You see it in your imagination, bro. You see it in your imagination. Anyway, but I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, I mean, I'd recommend this. If next time Young Frankenstein comes up, I'll definitely be like, hey, you should check out Abbott and Costello meets frankenstein like it's kind of to that level because they are playing it straight you know i mean costello is doing his bits and all that but the movie is played straight if that makes sense yeah so i'd i'd, I'd recommend this to my friends and my enemies and especially my frenemies so whenever you have some time off yeah i'd say give it a shot oh. there you go yeah, no, like, uh, it was my pick this week. This is one of my favorite movies ever. And, like, honestly, it's one of those films that, like, I'll, like, put away for a little while. And then every single time I watch it, I'm always just like, oh, my gosh, it still holds up. <laughs> like, because, like, I, like, there's always, like, that part of my brain where it's like, eh, it's kind of hokey. But, no, like, it's, it's, it's always a real delight to watch. You know, and honestly, I think that if you are someone who really like finds the history of Hollywood interesting, it's it's a must see. So that's my final thought. Can, can I add one thing? I I, 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 for, I forgot to kind of bring it up, but what kind of blew my mind is I was like, how are they going to fit these characters in there? Right? Because again, this mm -hmm. is the first one that Abbott and Costello like meet the monsters kind of thing and yet we 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 talked about it but but didn't really mention it but the fact that it was like we're gonna use his brain i know we, we <laughs> talked a little bit of, but just like how smart that is of mm -hmm. just it's you know like in a pitch meeting or just whatever it's like well why would i have it in costello like why would why would dracula why would frank why would they even be interested in them or how can we keep them interested and like that's the reason i just i just thought that was that that just tickled me uh, yeah like just like yeah it makes sense <laughs> <laughs> it makes total sense mm -hmm. and it's so simple anyway that was it yeah all right well uh you guys sold me i want to see it i mean the first 10 minutes actually sold me of what i saw so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna check it out um, but right now, I like to check out with Steve. What do you have for us next week? Next week, uh, again, I don't, I don't understand why you mention my name when it's not my turn. But it you is. You are the abbot to our Costello. You, you are the one who orders us around. So. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Uh, so it's JP's turn. Yay. And since democracy has fallen, I'm not going to let you guys pick or vote my pick. I'm just going to go straight to it. Uh, my pick will be from, this is two eights from 2018. It's going to be Bo Burnham's eighth grade. Okay. All right. All right. Looking uh, forward to seeing this one again. Looking forward to seeing this one for the first time. Me too. Same I didn't know that Bo Burnham, this was his movie. Did he write or direct it? He directed both, this? I think. He, he, he wrote and directed. And like Michaela said, she's surprised I picked a film about middle schoolers because it's no secret to her. I fucking hate kids, which is why I've never seen this movie before. But I love Bo, and I'm going to watch it. You heard JP. He fucking hates kids. So for Michaela, JP, El Don Dino, Jason Echols, and Steve Death TV, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. JP go, hates go. kids. Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and welcome. Uh, thank Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Dino Let.
Hi, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demono. Demon the oh, fucking shit. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demon Right? Whole Jesus time. Not even a club. And I just. I, as soon as it's the third one, because this is the third one, right? I am JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demon 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 Lo Oye Demon Lo Supercut of every time I fuck it up. Hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demon Lo Demon Lo. Hey, I'm JP Cerno, and thank you for watching Oye Demon Lo Network. And click here for additional videos, and don't forget to subscribe. The lonely singles in your neighborhood.